on the West Coast with Art Studio. And, you know, she's there going like, what are we going to do? I was like, let's just go ahead and shoot, shoot it. But we'll have to do it remotely. So, you know, usually I come in, I call myself the, the decorina. You know, I like to like fuss around with the sets and look for little things and mess with the drapery and that sort of thing. So when we were able to do that via FaceTime, I think it took, you know, like a couple of weeks that we were working on this set. Yeah, we had a few sets going. Yeah, and- oh, that's that's right. Yeah. Right. We had a few sets going. We built the main structure of the set before you left. And then we were kind of FaceTiming, still collecting a few props. And um, they were kind of our theme of the um, anthropomocene epoch. And then also like sort of embar- embarrassing abundance, cult of consumerism, and also you know, our historical reference to the Vanitas and um, also in that light, kind of our contemporary time and the parallel to colonialism. So we had all those things and also all our other crazy ideas going. We spent a long time setting this up and I was like freaking out because my collaborator was not there. And so we spent like like, uh, weeks, like on and off setting this set, this setup up. Yeah, and, and just to give you guys a little bit of, of background, when we set these up, they actually have to be installed so the animals can play on them. So those frames have all have like backing and there's construction behind that so that when the, the snakes or the monkeys or whatever hit the set, the whole thing just doesn't fall apart. But Nick was a special case, wasn't he, Anna? <laughs> yes. So, yeah, she gets um. to... Yeah, the the monkeys came in. I we had two different setups that day with monkeys, and the monkeys came in with diapers on with their handler. And um, Nick was first. He's older and sort of arthritic, so his handler was very gentle with him. But he was also trained to throw things out of a dumpster for some Hollywood movie. So him and a few other baboons and. Um, so after we'd spent so long, like fussing over the little details, he got on there and immediately threw everything off and um, <laughs> like was, was all super crazy. And, and he would hold a pose for a second. If his handler was talking to him, like Nick, 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 no, 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 no. And then he'd grin and then he'd go crazy. So he did that <laughs> a bunch of times and we'd have to pull him off, put his diaper back on and then I'd reset it the way I thought that it looked when on <laughs> and I had done it. <laughs> right, right. I mean, the, the 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 sets are so elaborate. And and actually, another thing I um I noticed the other day, the frame that he's in right there is the actual frame that you have the photograph in. Correct. Yes. And that's the same with the yes uh, with the snakes and the cockroaches as well. Right. Well, we have right. we have prints for sale that are just this, and we this was also uh, got accepted into a billboard project in Cologne, um, where it was up for only a week, but it was up um, at a subway stop on a billboard. Um, it, was so it, was, it was this picture, but there's one of one for all the these setups. We the frame in the picture. We also put it um, did one one. One print on plexi or aluminum, depending on the piece, um, in that goes in the frame that's photographed. So that's right. like a one of one original, and that's what's in the show. And that's what we have here, right? And also, yeah. in, we have the same um, thing for this. The frame that this set is in is also the frame that you have it in the gallery. Um, it's a detail that um, you know when people come to the gallery, they can see that, but they may not see that in this slide. But here's another one where um, this was a complicated um, set to, I mean, they're all complicated <laughs> sets, but I mean, the rats and the snakes in the, in the same time wasn't really um, feasible. Yeah, it would have been a bad idea, a very bad idea. <laughs> so they were photographed separately. Yeah, so this set, um, Una, okay, I would keep, and she can go into further detail, but she, you know, you really have to keep that camera in the exact same place, super steady. And then the handler from the East Bay Bavarium in Berkeley, California, he would come in and drop in one snake 
And then we kind of maneuver the snake because to, you know, they don't pose for you. They move around and do their own thing. So it's a constant back and forth with the handler and each individual animal. So then when the snakes wrapped, um, then the, the rats came in. And I actually found some old video today and the rats are all over the place. Like it's a miracle that we could get three of them kind of anywhere, <laughs> anywhere, because they were just like, they'd hit the set and then they'd run behind something or they'd run, they try to jump on the floor. There's always something going on. So with these, uh, Una can talk more about this very, very careful compositing. Uh, I think that's really the technical term for getting everybody on the same page, so to speak. Right. So we're talking a little, you know, just the process of constructing these sets, but um, I'm fascinated, like the two of you working together and like your vision for these installations and the sets that you're building and the photographs that you're making. And, and this installation, all, it's, it's not only these photographs or the, the this table, Vanita's table in the center of the room. There's also one side of the, the room has uh, Anna's paintings that um, Una took a blowtorch to and some of them <laughs> completely burned and they were put in these Requilla, where are the Requilla works? Um, okay, now these contain paintings that were completely burnt, um, but there's also, here's some of those paintings that were burnt there too. So, um, you know, I do, I just want to let people know to, if you want to learn a little bit more about Una and Anna's work as or. Um, we have um, some, we have there's uh, a longer statement about their vision and intention in this work on our website and it, and you can also visit their website or it's ort.com or project.com. Or project. Or project I knew that. <laughs> but um, do you want to talk a little bit about like decisions that you made in this particular exhibition, um, either why everything that's on the table has a price tag or you also made product for this beautiful plates with rats and flies on them and beautiful napkin and um, utensil set which are also for sale and they're beautifully wrapped in these beautiful boxes with ribbons they're just lovely <laughs> i like your sales pitch <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, they're, they're really you're great. hired <laughs> <laughs> so the this is these are also on the table with a, a whole assortment. I mean, you should have seen the gallery when these two with their, they needed to hire some assistants. They had two uh, assistants working with them, but this room was just, we had four folding tables uh, all out with stuff on top of them, below them, decisions to be made. I mean, it really was kind of, they, they knew what they wanted to do with the room, but they brought a lot of extra stuff just in case and they had to construct the table. And, so just because um, I think it would, will lead into like what, what you're thinking about when you're making work, um, the, the decisions that you made for why you wanted to have an installation, um, maybe why you have um, price tags on everything. Why did you burn all those paintings? <laughs> I know that's a lot of questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anything. Well, I can start. I'll start it and then Una can, can, take, it, can take it from there. I, you know, the, the, just to start with the idea of an installation, it, for Una and I, it's a no brainer because all of our work involves an installation. All the finished uh, photography we think of as, as documentation of a giant installation that already that happened in the past. You know, we have pieces there with live human models, with animal models, um, some with no models, uh, and that's just been a really big part of our process. And ort means a scrap or morsel left after a meal. We use that roughly as, as a constriction or a limitation from which we could create upon these tableaus that roughly have the idea of a table or some sort of tabletop uh, ephemera within, within the piece itself. So to do an installation was just a no brainer. And we had been working on a series, uh, Perishing Vanitas, uh, which was a piece, some pieces that Una had been playing around with some of these ideas prior to this project. And then we, we you know, she was gracious enough that we were sort of really wanted to fuse them and bring them in and blow them up literally into, 
into the ORT project. So it, it just was another continuation of that and making the artwork uh, the real paintings, I was studying for the first time old master technique, which don't, you know, I'm still working on that. I'm still working on that. But uh, it was just really, really interesting to go in and make finished oil paintings and then knowing that you're going to incinerate them and destroy them. So as someone who's used to making, you know, precious, beautiful objects or objects which would be quote unquote collected and then to make them and then burn them to take them away, it was really... a a very bizarre study in impermanence, which is ties right into the historical aspects of the Vanitas. Una, do you want to take it from here? Um, yeah, I mean, that was said beautifully, I think. And um, I understand that struggle. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we brought, um, it wasn't called Perishing Vanitas, but I was sort of playing around with the ideas of um, basically, uh, the decline of civilization um, and the burning as a symbol of that. And um, then it just made sense to um, take it all the way and burn paintings all the way down and put them in urns, kind of like rather than just faux burning them, which we were kind of playing with, not faux burning, we were burning paintings and burning books, but we were burning them part way. And sort of, it was a natural conclusion to, to have on a paint paintings rather than having thrift store paintings or purchased paintings. Um, and then, yeah, just taking that idea all the way. And we actually did a workshop where we um, learned how we're assisted, you know, in glass glowing and made the urns ourselves as well with help. Um, oh my God, I did not know you didn't make the urns. <laughs> yeah, that's why they look so funky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not like, yeah. Anyway, I mean, if we were just buying them, they would be like, kind of like, you know, like have a different look. But yes, <laughs> um, yeah. And I think, and then you know, all along, I've struggled with the. I mean, Anna struggled with it a little bit, just because you make something beautiful, or even if it's not the normal idea of beauty, idea of beauty, you know, and then burning it. And, but it, that is symbolic. It's kind of what our work is about. So taking this sort of perishing Vanitas and Vanitas idea all the way, I think was really important for both of us, regardless of where we go from here. Um, and yeah, I think that the, the price tags, going back to that question, um, ties in with sort of the idea of where we are ecologically and sort of a statement in ORT project, which is embarrassing abundance and um, just the cult of contemporary cult of convenience and cult of consumerism, which I'm not, we're poking at that, poking fun at it because I'm part of it. I mean, what do I do when I, I find myself shopping when I go like online and I'm scrolling through Instagram or something, suddenly I'm shopping or like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like all that stuff. Um, so I'm not, I'm part of it, not, not on the outside, you know, snobbily looking, looking in. And also I like luxury goods. Who fucking doesn't? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, like, I don't know. Some, maybe some people don't, but um but it's also like trying to sort of examine that a little bit and poke fun at that and play with those ideas. And that's partially what the traditional Vanitas is about, you know, kind of like earthly pleasures, which I'm, we're not against pleasure. Let's just be clear. Um, <laughs> um, and then the price tag is a cult, cult, you know, cult of convenience and of, every, of consumerism where everything is a price, you know, and art is definitely part of that, the artifice of ours, art. So, you know, we haven't sold a lot of pieces and I maybe priced them too high because I was in charge of some little, 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 little props on the table. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, but we, it, I felt, we felt like that was an important concept, not just to recreate um, or try to recreate, a, you know, a deconstructed Vanitas table. It also wanted to reflect you know, the other part of it or a contemporary view. Cause I mean, yeah, I think, yeah, that could be, you could say it's well done or not well done, but also pushing the idea a little bit. Yeah. And I wanted to come up, I remember we were setting up this table and you're, 
and it, it, you know, it's always just like, she goes, oh, you're going in, you're tweaking it again. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Cause we take turns tweaking things on the table. Like I get 10 minutes and Una gets 10 minutes and I get 10 minutes and then it's a fight for the last 10 minutes. I'm just kidding, but you know, it's all good. But I was like, every angle, a still life painter should be able to paint their own painting from our table, you know? And that was my little organize, another organizing principle that I used. I was like, will this make a pretty painting? Would this make a pretty painting? You know? Uh, so it's, it's, there's so many layers to this. It boggles the mind. I still haven't uncovered uh, probably half of them. Yeah. You, you know, at the, at the opening, I said that to one of the painters who was there and he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think I said it in the right way. I don't think I was said it as eloquently. He's like, paint your thing and I'm a few centuries past that, you know, whatever. He like. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll stick with the hyper realist painters. Maybe. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I think that's what, there are so many layers in this, in this show. And it's really, I think it, it, it all works. It's, you know, if we just had the photographs, if we just had the paintings, if you just did the table, I mean, but they're all connected and and you know we've had a lot of people in the gallery it opened a week ago and um i had people in today for a long time it, you know it spurs conversations about things which is you know that's really really great um and Excellent. yeah um i was gonna say something oh my mind i just lost what uh. I was gonna say. but um oh darn i hate when that happens it was about a stirring conversation and people being, yep. art, you know, it's nice when your artwork is a bit provocative and it provokes conversation, thinking, investigation, exploration, you yeah. know, someone can take something home with them, you know, right. quote, unquote, metaphorically. So right. I love it. Oh, I, the other thing I was just, I just remembered, but, um, the two of the people that were in today, I mean, they, they saw your sense of humor too. You know, and it's just right. Like, isn't that great when people, you know, it's it's not all this darkness. And you know, I mean, it, it's pretty heavy subjects that you're tackling or poking at. But um, you know, like Una said, we we like luxury. <laughs> we like pleasure. Um, so it's not, you know, it's it's yeah, and it's not it's not sarcastic. It's not it's. Um, I think it's great. I just love what you did when I, when it, these two, they took, it was about four days of installing this show. And I came in on the third day and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, because I really didn't know. Um, I gave, I gave them the room. I said, okay, I'll come back and help you towards the end. Um, and uh, cause they needed to build stuff and uh, they really transforms the place. I mean, people that know the gallery, the windows are covered so you can't see the lake. So it's it just creates a whole different um, atmosphere and the lighting. Um, they've done things with the lighting that are are different than what we usually do here. Um, now I can't, you know, my my um, my PowerPoint is, I can't, the little thumbnails on the side are so tiny. So I just want to go through here and just um, see if there's things that I have not shown. And chime in if there's anything you want to say. There's the... uh, just a thank you again for the opportunity to exhibit there and oh. being such a gracious gallery hostess. Oh. I mean, letting us have, it was mayhem in there. I mean, you guys have no idea. It was piled boxes in the hallway, crates. And then there's all this burnt stuff. So there's ash all over the floor. And like it smelled like it had just been on fire. <laughs> I was like, I hope she doesn't pick it out because it smells bad. We're going to clean it all up, but it's okay. We can, everything is <laughs> terrible and cleanable. Hey, the, we should um, have the and the cakes in, in the gallery. That would have been horrible. That was a mess that day. <laughs> um, this is the one, I don't know if you see my mouse, but this is the one with the cockroaches. Yeah. A mouse moving there. Um, and here's another one with rats, let them eat cake. And yeah, Marie, Marie Antoinette's after party. Oh, right. This is a piece that Una and I did when she moved out here. This was in Vermont on, on my property. And we mm -hmm. set this table up and let it 
I, we'll see what happens, what, what, what we'll exhibit in the future. But this was part of a piece and I left it in the woods set up for mm -hmm. months and just let it disappear by animals and other, wow. other things. So it's, it's neat to see it uh, in its original form framed and on the gallery wall. Yeah, no, I remember you, you told, I, I did know that you, you set it up outside and photographed it outside, but you actually left it. Yeah, everything was left because it was all organic. It either came from my garden, you know, or mm -hmm. organically obtained, you know, it was just, and I can, I just left it there and, mm -hmm. you know, Una and I would check in on it every, every <laughs> few weeks or so just to see how it was going. She'd come visit. <laughs> Did you photograph it? Yeah, there are, there are snapshots at least of that. Mm -hmm. There are some different iterations of this piece. It's kind of a work in progress. We, I mean, it's beautiful and we did two of them, but we'll probably um, take it a bit further, maybe even design yeah. it to decompose. Yes. Or, you know what I mean? We were, we're talking about um, other iterations of this um, that, and this one in specific is Saint, I always call it Saint Hubris. Saint Hubris. Know. That's my fault. Yeah. Saint Hubris. Um, you know, who was into ethical hunting and he's this saint, patron saint of sort of archers and hunters and animals. And yeah, um, also is known to have seen some religious cross on some deer's forehead. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I don't mean to laugh if anybody, if anybody's- I mean, this is, a, this is such a complicated image, you know, it's so, it's so gorgeous, you know, but there's a deer carcass in there. So. Yes. Um, but it really, it's, it's just has a lot of power. And these are, I think uh, I showed, did I show both of these? Yes, I did. Okay. And so I think, let me make sure, I think I've got everything from my slideshow. So I think what I'm going to do now is stop sharing. And I'm going to take a peek at the chat and see if there's any questions. There aren't any questions, but that's, that often happens. Um, there's, two ways we could do it. People could write something in the chat or they could raise their hand and I'll see you and you can unmute yourself and ask a question. So if anyone has any questions. Um, I think Terry has a, Teres has a question. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to unmute her. Um, yeah. Just unmuted myself. There you go. Hi, now thank you. And what an incredible exhibit. It was so great it was great to, Sort of zoom in and see some of the details but i have questions that are related how did the two of you meet and how did the two of you know that you had a similar aesthetic that could could be combined into a single work of art how did that working relationship start well, yeah good question uh we met in a horseback riding lesson I think, wasn't that we met with one other yeah. person, Una, Anna, and Ava, and the instructor finally gave up and just said, you on the brown horse, you on the gray horse. And it was, you know, a little bit of fate that we met. And in the beginning, we had, we, we had some overlap with our general aesthetic, you know, and our interests and that sort of thing. Wouldn't you say, Una? Oh, yeah. And we followed each other's um, artwork. And kind of also were in some informal sort of support groups looking and critiquing and um you know just also supporting each other if we ever had a show or something like that so each of us have our own art practice and then I think we became closer over the years it's like 28 year friendship or 27 or 29 it's something and um at some point we just kind of our conversation led to let's do something and I've done a lot of collaborations in the past. I know Anna has collaborated, but I've done some big collaborations that some of them are not so good, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and some good ones too, but I also did a used to do a little bit of video and film and stuff. So those things always take a team and Anna has a background in doing set design as well. But um, so yeah, so, and I kind of feel like it, the work came to a new place that, that neither one of us would have gone on our own. So it is exciting and interesting, not always easy, 
but um, but rewarding. And it's also fueled my own working with Anna has also fueled my own um, art practice in terms of like certain ways I approach it or think of it. Um, so it's been a great collaboration. Like I said, not always easy, but 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 always wonderful. Yeah, I, mean, I, I joked about it, and, and I, now I, it's not so much a joke. I, Una and I, I we would say like what we wanted to do when we were 19 years old, but didn't have the resources to do. You know, we didn't have the money, the organizational skills, the, the communication skills, all of these great things that come into our collaboration now. And we still get really giddy. Like when we come up with an idea, we're like high five and like, oh my God, it's genius. Oh my God. We're like, you know, 19 year olds again. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. I'm so doing that, you know? And we also can support each other uh, emotionally, uh, intellectually, you know? I'm, Una's always opening my eyes. She's, you know, always like, well, what about this with the Vanitas and the symbolism of this? And I'm like, oh, God, I didn't even think of that. Oh, wow, heavy. You know, we just are always, we can always feed each other, you know? And yeah, collaborations are, can be tricky, like any partnership, any partnership needs, you know, communication. And, and also sometimes one person saying like, you know what, You're, that idea is really, really strong. I'm going to support that you know, and I'll let myself step back for a minute so that that can come forward. And it's that dancing all the time that makes this work. Yeah, that actually a question from uh, Pamela. I think that what you guys just uh, talked about answers a question, which was, uh, you know, how does collaboration work? Who decides who does what? And I, and I will just tell um, people here that it was really a pleasure to, let me get rid of this chat. Um, watch you guys work together because one thing I noticed is that you you both have a lot of respect for each other and um, you know that's the most important thing you you know you listen to each other you work together you say no I don't want to do it that way then you know and then but you know you're great friends and it's obvious and and um, I don't know how you could do it without you know the kind of respect and, and care uh, that you have for each other I'm just going to take another look at the chat. Um, somebody, uh, Carol asks, um, how does smell figure in? <laughs> I, that might well, be related to the deer table, huh? <laughs> well, well, I don't know. If it's, is it the deer table, Carol, or is it the smell in the gallery? Because the smell in the gallery comes from the burnt, actual burnt, the burnt objects are in the gallery. Like the, there's burnt chairs and burnt... Uh, wood and burnt fabric and burnt oil painting. So that smell, a few people walked in, they're like, what is that? I was like, well, that's our special Ort incense. Thank you very much. Not available for purchase yet. It's just a test. Um, outside, yeah, smell, smell becomes, smell fruit flies. Fruit flies have been a bane of our existence with installations in the past. Like I had one in our old studio in Crockett, California. And a few days in, I was like, no, it'll be fine. I had no idea it was fruit fly season. They were hatching everywhere. We had to like skedaddle, get everything outside, dump it, spray it down. I was like, oh God, I hope Jerry yeah. didn't pick us up. But he was the gallery <laughs> owner, but uh, he was okay. So those different, different smells come along. Una had the brilliant idea, and we're working on that now, of actually creating an orange fragrance. Ooh. So we're, we'll be working on that one. Does that mean it's going to be body owners? <laughs> uh, that's too easy. It's got to be crazy. too easy, right? No, it's too easy for you guys. <laughs> Sam, um, Sam, you had a question in the. Um, did I see something in the chat? Do you want to just ask it? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the Anthropocene is part of your. Um, I guess raison d'etre, not to butcher <laughs> French too much, but for this exhibition anyway. I was wondering if you are familiar with uh, Edward O. Wilson's concept of the aromacene, not aroma, but aromacene. Um, he's got he discusses this with a poet, Robert Hass, in a in a beautiful little book. Um, but he's calling it it shouldn't be the anthropocene; it should be the eros. Aromacene, 
which means the age of loneliness because we are destroying biodiversity is just being devastated. And if it continues, we'll basically be um, a planet of humans and monoculture and pets. And I'm wondering if you're familiar with that concept and maybe that would spur another project. Well, I think it definitely sparked your interest, Una. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I'm not familiar with it. I have attended several lectures that were way above my head <laughs> on um, Anthropomocene and also reframing that and talking about um, current politics and uh, renaming Anthropomocene. Um, but uh, which were all like super interesting. Um, and, but I don't know that in particular, but I, I'm very interested. I, I'm not personally on a personal level, not so sure we'll be the last one standing as humans. I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send each of you a, a book. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sam. That'd be You're wonderful. welcome. Wonderful Listen. exhibition, congratulations again. Thank you. Sam, if you want to um, type the name of the book um, and E.O. Wilson and uh, Robert Haas um, in the chat, you could just type that and people can see that there. Um, okay. E.O. Wilson is also known as, I mean, he's known as the ant man, right? He's the, he wrote all about ants. He's a biologist. Yeah, I don't want to talk much about him because I'll start tearing up. He, he recently <laughs> passed away, but uh -huh. he's, you know, he is, uh, he's like what Einstein is to astrophysics. Uh, he is to biology and or or Dar uh, he's our modern Darwin. Anyway, sounds like a must man. read. Sounds like it's yeah. required. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's definitely a must read. He's good. I yeah. think I'll put it in the chat. You know, we're I'm really feeling work outside, Anna. I'm feeling we're back in the forest again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll put on my coat. Yeah. <laughs> Not the rock. Too it's too going to be too cold out. <laughs> we'll wait till spring. So. I, you know, there's a couple of things I don't have. Um, I don't have photographs of the dancer. Um, but again, it was another one of those sets that um, you guys put a lot of time and care into. You, you painted everything in the set a shade of gray. The alchemist piece. Yeah, yeah the alchemist. It's it's the alchemist. And if, for those who are, can't see it, there's a, it's on the website. There's a huge pile of garbage, like car doors, tires, uh, sculptural objects, all kinds of things. And Una and I spent two months collecting them like on the side of the road and then meticulously washing them so they'd be clean on set. And then everything was painted shades of gray. And there was, and standing in front of it in her absolute fierceness is a dancer model who's 89 years old, naked, just staring you right down. And she's the alchemist, this is story of the alchemist journey. Oh, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Ona. Yeah. So the, just thinking about the props and, um, oh, so actually these are photographs that, these are on the website. Yeah, we only have one of these, but um, the first one, very powerful image. Um, like where, where do you store all this stuff? Like, <laughs> where's, where's <laughs> <your mom's name? laughs> hey. It will go into, I have a storage, a climate controlled storage unit in Bennington, Vermont, and that is being moved. All the work will be moved there and hopefully we'll have another exhibit and uh, similar lines that we'll see. We'll see, there's always a, a mystery where artwork is stored uh, by, with artists. I, you know, even if you did, I joke that in my next life, I'm gonna do Indian miniature paintings because they're this big and I can just put them in a box. Well, it was really great to see the gallery, just to see you guys work in progress. And I mean, it wasn't just the gallery, it was the hallway. And um, <laughs> they even had a um, a little burner to, you know, melt beeswax to cover up the urns. I mean, everything was just, there was so much activity. It was, it was great, <laughs> it was great. Um, I did put uh, one of the photos, I didn't, I didn't get the best photos, but I have a photo on uh, in, on our Instagram to give you a sense of what what it was like in progress. And also, one of the assistants did a, a lovely a little real little. video. Um, I think that's just on Instagram, though. We made it our story yesterday, um, 
but that yes, was Christy Rose. She did, she's genius. She's the yeah. director at the barn, the Albany barn. It's barn art space or barn gallery in Albany. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, we begged her to help us and she mm -hmm. had a weekend free. So she helped us. And, um, she, she does, she's like master of Instagram and also social media. So she has a bunch of really cool reels. On she Instagram. did a great job. It was um, we had Camille up here too. She was, she was marvelous as well. So yeah. So give us yeah. a thank you to all, all our present and future assistants. You are, we can't do it without you. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> I mean, it's great to have one of them is on, is on our Zoom meeting now. Vincenzia is yeah. down there. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Vincenzia. Yay. Oh, we love meeting her. <laughs> She's really nice pretty fantastic. Um, so uh, Sam has put the poetic species. Um, Edward, I'm uh, writing this down. And then uh, Fern, um, I've never enjoyed an artist talk more. Fascinating, informative, and charming. Thank you, Una and Anna. I applaud your attention to detail and purpose. Congratulations from Fern. Yeah, yeah. Got Fern. my new best friend. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think another one just. Hi. Yeah. I wonder whether you have any expectations of your viewers' response. Expectations oh, for, for people visiting the gallery and likewise for yourselves. I, you know, it's a really good question. It's difficult to have a, for us, yeah, I know some artists that will have a very guided, like, here's what I want people to walk away with. They need to walk out the door with blank. Una and I had a sense more, or at least I, I'm speaking for myself, I guess, that we wanted to have people think about things, to come in and have a bit of a grander experience in an art gallery, so that you were brought in, so you would play inside there. So there's a lot of mental play and that there would be a, maybe a little bit of tongue in cheek or there would be a thought of, it's, it's difficult to deal with death in American culture. You really have to have a little bit of a tongue in cheek approach to it. And the idea of impermanence, things can get very heavy very quickly. And not that I'm against that. So I, but that was something that Una and I explore and wanna investigate and play with. So we, we hope that people will have a little bit of a thought process, a little bit of fun with it at the same time. Una? Can you explore that a little bit more? Oh, I think you put it well, but, I, uh, or it's well put, but um, yeah, I, I, during the opening, I had someone come up to me, it's just a reminder. And she said, she was sort of questioning, like, what's this about? And I said, well, she was like pointing to a couple of particular pieces. And I was saying, decline of civilization <laughs> and death and rubble and then she was like oh yeah I was kind of getting that but she was smiling you know what I mean so she was like enjoying being tickled and I think that's kind of also I mean I don't propose to have answers but I we do think about these things a lot and it's kind of on the collective mind I think for most of us anyway um and it's also yeah, it's new perspectives. It is art, it's artifice. So it's made up, you know, um, and it's, but it's also reflecting, I think, culture. Um, and so we're kind of, I feel like we're a mirror. That's at least that's my perspective. So, yeah. Does that help? Oh, sorry, sorry go ahead. Oh, no, I was just hoping that that kind of helped generate or put some light on, on you know, what we were as artists, our attentions from doing the exhibition, you know, as it's that creating that fodder. And I love the word tickling people because I, I think that that's really a, a poignant yeah. place to remember. Like it should, we want it to tickle you. And it also at the same time, maybe tickling is sometimes very painful, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get lost now. Well, it's fun for me to see when people walk in the room, just to see the different reactions. I had an older couple in here today and they, they were like, their eyes were bugging out. <laughs> just like, whoa. <laughs> and we started to talk a, a little bit. They loved it. And last week I had a, um, a young couple in um, and 
you know, I, I made sure the, all the lights were on, opened the doors, they came in. And this woman was like, love it, love it. <laughs> Brilliant, you know. So there's so like there's a lot here for for everybody. And um I, I yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Sorry, I'm like a blabbermouth, but um I wanted to add that I'm also, I mean, it's not always easy to hear, but I'm also interested in negative reactions or when people don't like it or disturbed by it. Not that that's the point or we're trying to make someone upset or provoke something, but it is like, I think good art pokes a little bit, you yeah. know, and good literature and good, you know, like it pokes at ideas a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the visitors that came, they, they want, they welcome the poking. Um, <laughs> you know, there, there, there may be some that will be like, well, run right out of here. I don't know. But um, I think it's, it's done you know, it's it's not an in-your-face thing. There's, like I said before, there's a sense of humor. The work is just, some of it is just, just gorgeous, you know? I mean, the way you've presented it and tied in the photos and the paintings and the urns and the table and... Yeah, we do tend to focus, like, tonight, I was like, did we focus too much on just the humorous aspect? But Una and I love beautiful objects, even, as she oh. would say, even in the grotesque. And to still make uh, beautiful pieces, it, it's important, you know, it's it's in our hearts. No, it's not, I don't think it's all humorous at all. I just, I, I like that it's, that it's, that aspect is there, you know, um, because it does, like you were saying earlier, I mean, it, it helps sometimes um, to digest um, some of these pretty heavy um, ideas, so. So I'm gonna just double check again if there's a last call here. Um, <laughs> someone said, um, I think Therese said, it would be great to have a stop action um, film of the installation process. Oh my God, that would have been great. You guys have to do that next time you do an installation. That, that would be <laughs> we so. joke about. We have we have a couple of a couple of uh, ones that Una's taken in different parts of the process, but uh, yeah, that'd be great. Well, anyway, it's um it's getting near our time, and yeah. I've really enjoyed talking with the two of you, working with you, and I thank you so much for really taking this um, this gallery, transforming it, and and your your work, and um, really you um, honor all of us by the work that you, you know, the seriousness that you put into creating your work. And um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanna say one quick thing. I think that Lake George, um, the courthouse gallery is a special place. It allows, it's really was an opportunity. For, I've talked to some other artists also in the community um, the, that you host uh, solo shows is amazing. It gives people a really beautiful opportunity and that, most of the board and the community comes even when there's still COVID kind of at the tail end. It felt like a really special and supportive um, place to show and a safe place. So I am so grateful. I know Anna feels the same way um, that we got to show there and feel really honored that we got picked. But beyond that, it was just been a great experience so far. So Absolutely. thank you. That's great. It's so nice to hear that because I just lo I, I loved uh, working with you guys and that's what we do. We want to um, present really interesting work and thank you for, for making it. So, so I'm going to end this meeting now. Bravo. Thank you all. I hope you all, I mean, if you haven't been here yet, come, we're here um, and it's up till February 25th. It's fantastic and um, it smells like it smells like a fireplace in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're not selling it. Good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Una and Nana. And thank you, everybody else, for, for showing up. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the gallery. Okay. Good thank night. You.